So climate change impacts plants in many different ways. Perhaps the one we think about most often is temperature, but also we can think about precipitation. So how much rainfall and how frequently. Also things like sea level rise, that impacts plant communities along the coast, such as salt marshes and mangroves. We can also think about other types of disturbances like fire. So fires are happening more frequently and with a greater intensity and that, of course, has a big impact on plant community survival. Plants are, are mostly rooted in, in place. Uh, their dispersal is very gradual uh, and, we're, and they're faced with a, a situation where the changes are gonna be so rapid uh, of such amplitude that they're not gonna, most of them aren't gonna be able to stay ahead of it from the standpoint of, of humans uh, depending on plants, uh, the, we depend on having the, produ the produce of, of all of these plants that we grow, maize, wheat, rice, the staples, uh, and as climate change hits, it's going to be more and more difficult uh, for that to be a dependable food source. So the Earth has actually experienced climate change over the course of its entire history. Um, the main difference now being that the rate at which things are changing is much faster. So we can use historical data um, to compare with present day data to see how over the course of the last 50 to 100 years, how plant populations and species have responded to the changes we've already observed. There is no better record than a herbarium to tell us about the climate uh, from the past. A herbarium is essentially like a library of dried, preserved plants. It is uh, a, a museum collection of dried specimens that have been collected over the last four centuries. Herbaria are experiencing a revolution. They've existed for for centuries, but uh, and they've been mainly a place for botanists, collectors to deposit specimens as a record of that species in that time and that space. Again, the herbarium is primarily to establish the baseline. So what were things like before climate change really hit so that we have that as a foundation, a comparison for everything that's going on now. So this story here is a uh, publication that's in press right now from a graduate student in my lab who worked with two undergrads. And it's this little oak fern that uh, Mike and I 30 years ago discovered was a, a missing diploid. It was a species that was completely unknown and it's restricted just to the Appalachian region. We did a... a climate study to look at where it had been in the past. Herbarium vouchers from the last hundred years gave us enough information so that we could predict going back in time and predict into the future. Future for this little fern is very dire. In 2070, it's very likely to be gone. If you think about like the herbarium, though that you know you studied uh, how plants behave in the past. Uh, phytotron is really the current and in the future. Now, phytotron is a sophisticated plant growth facility equipped with a, a variety of different control of uh, environment conditions like temperature, humidity, or lighting. And so that allows uh, researchers to simulate a lot of different type of climates, uh, you know, ranging from Arctic, desert, or tropics. And so that uh, kind of simulation will allow research to really understand how plants respond to different kind of environments. I think that we're really at a key inflection point in our ability to feed ourselves the climate. And if we look forward into the future, I think Phytotron um, generated research is gonna help us be able to create and grow plants that are resilient to that so that we can continue on. So one of the recent projects my lab has been working on is trying to understand the effects of elevated temperature on pollination in plants. This is a major problem that we're facing as nighttime temperatures are elevated. 
And we're already seeing the effects of this in North Carolina with decreased yields because of these elevated nighttime temperatures. Using the Phytotron chambers to keep those temperatures elevated at night and to study the effect on pollination and then manipulating various genetic or other factors to allow us to understand how we can make plants more resilient to that effect and have greater pollination at night for plants that are resilient to the effects of climate change and increased crop productivity. So my lab study plant infectious diseases, and so we're really interested in how climate change will impact the severity or frequency of plant diseases, which, you know, disease insects and parasitic weeds cause 40% of our year loss globally. It's a huge, it's a major problem, and climate is going to make it worse. So we really want to understand this in order to feed the population in the next hundreds of years and thousand years, right? So uh, what we have done, thanks to the Phytotron, uh, recently we did a, a project to understand how heat waves can affect the ability of plants to defend against pathogens and insects. We actually figured out that due to the phytotron uh, control and come up with a solution to make plants more resilient to defend against disease even at warm temperature which otherwise plants will fail to do that. And so this is just one example. So the phytotron really supports a lot of research in the, the Triangle area, not only academic research here at Duke, but also helping found a lot of small biotech companies that are working at this intersection of climate plant interactions because they can control the conditions so carefully in this facility. So it's really driving forward a lot of activity in the region that will help us to create plants that are more resilient to the effects of climate change. I think this is particularly exciting because agriculture and plant biology in particular is one of the few sectors where not only um, can we have plants resilient to climate change, but they can be part of mitigation of climate change to create a carbon um, net negative system of agriculture. And that's something that we're working towards in the future.